Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, and it's about leadership, character, and creating a superior culture of excellence. My special guest today is the head coach of our University of Hawaii men's basketball team. He is Coach Iran Ganat, and today we are going beyond basketball. Hey, Coach Iran, welcome to Beyond the Lines. Uh, thanks for having me. Really excited. Looking forward to having a good discussion with you and growing from this as well. Coach Iran, you've been you've been just a fantastic coach for us here in Hawaii, and. I want to ask you if you can first share a, a bit about your background growing up. Yeah, I mean, pretty simple. Uh, born in Philly, grew up in Jersey. I know it's surprising for some people to hear my East Coast backgrounds because this is year 20 for coaching for me, but all in the West. But I uh, grew up in New Jersey, went to a small school, Swarthmore College in Pennsylvania. I knew I played there, a two-year captain. Um, but my playing career was not going to continue. I loved the game, so I wanted to still be around it, wanted to coach, and I got my first opportunity at St. Mary's. I spent three years at St. Mary's under Randy Bennett, went four years to the University of Hawaii, came back to St. Mary's for five years, and now in my second stint at Hawaii, going into my eighth year as a head coach. So um, it's been quite a journey. It's been an awesome journey uh, with great people. Uh, met my wife here. We've been married since 2015. We raised our daughter, Ziza who just turned 11 is in basketball camp. So life is good. Now, Coach Iran, tell me about your relationships with legendary coaches, Riley Wallace and Bob Nash and Larry Little. Yeah, I mean, one of the unique things is I've always been, it's the way I was raised, you study and immerse yourself into the culture and the program, the state, all those things um, to understand it, what you're part of. There's nothing better than representing a team, but also, you know, here we represent a state, uh, um, obviously the university, a great university and a great athletic department. So to, to get the odds weren't great, but how lucky was I to be able to learn under Coach Wallace the one year I could because it was his last year and, and learn under Coach Nash and Jackson Wheeler and, you know, again, meet the guys, former players, former coaches who would come in and out. And, you know, Larry Little and Riley were really close. Obviously, they worked together. A coach worked for him. And so getting to know him over the years, because when coach retired and he'd moved to Vegas, uh, they were kind of inseparable in Vegas and at the final fours and really sad to hear of his passing. He was such a great mentor to me. He was so good to me and so many people. And obviously my first in at Hawaii, uh, you see a guy like Red Rocha come in and out with obviously coach Nash had played for him. So just the amount of former players, former coaches that I could be around was, and, and co players that I was able to coach, whether it was here or St. Mary's, what an honor. And even as I, you know, now in my 20th year coaching, former, you know, really historic head coaches at our profession, any profession, anybody I could be around and learn and grow. I'm just so grateful that people, uh, it was important to them to give back and hopefully I'll do the same. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, we did our 100th year anniversary here of our basketball program. And, and just to see those guys I had met earlier, meet new faces, uh, bring former players, former coaches, managers, any support staff back. And celebrate the whole year was awesome. Now, Coach Iran, what is it about coaching that you love so much? You know, you always got to answer that. It's like, why do you play? Why do you do what you do? Why is so important? And so that's an easy question for me. I, I wanted to coach because I love the game. I love to compete. I love being part of a team. And then uh, I love, you know, the challenges that come with that. So that's just, you know, the, the coaches were so influential for me. We have kids, you know, guys at a critical time in their life, 18 and 22 year old guys. And so because they were so influential for me, it's something I wanted to do to give back. So, again, I love the game. I love to compete. I love being part of a team and, and don't take lightly the influence I and we have on these kids at a critical time. Now, Coach Iran, I, I love talking coach to coach here. Now, what do you what do you feel the greatest coaches or the greatest leaders do? You know, more than anything, um, they promote and create an atmosphere that allows people to be successful and to grow. 
um, and they're consistent with that. So we, everybody talks about culture. That's not easy. Um, it's not easy to, easy to build and it's not easy to protect and continue to maintain. Uh, so I think more than anything, the great coaches obviously uh, put people in a situation to be successful and to grow, to fail, to succeed, to keep going, to keep moving forward. But more, like I said, they provide an atmosphere that's consistent in terms of encouraging those qualities. Now, in terms of your leadership style, how would your players describe your leadership style? Yeah, that's a great question because I'd say what I would hope it would be, and maybe those are two different things sometimes. And, and part of it, I'd say one question, one thing I'd say is I hope they say improving. Because just like we, you know, growth mindset is so important. You ask your guys to get better, we better be doing the same. So uh, at the end of the day, I think it's consistent. Uh, demanding, but not the meaning. It's such a tough balance because you love your, your, your kids. And just like when you have, you know, I have a daughter, um, but you have to challenge them because you see what's ahead for them and how challenging the world is. So you have to create, again, a great atmosphere. I hope they say that he creates and his staff creates a great atmosphere for us to succeed. That's <clears throat> not easy, but it's necessary for us to improve um he's very consistent he's very fair he's very direct he's very truthful um both with the good and the bad and he's always there for us so i think those are the things that are probably the most important for for me and it's hard to say i and me you're asking me those questions but i represent us we us our and our staff no i i like hearing that coach iran and yeah i mean the greatest coaches are always learning which makes them greater and greater. I mean, that's just, that's what happens if you're a great leader. And you've been building a culture of excellence with your team since becoming head coach in Hawaii in 2015. What, what do you really want your team identity to be like? You know, someone told me after a, a coach, after we played them, it's probably the best thing. When he sent me this message, I was like, bingo, that's what I'd like people to say about our team and he sent a message after a game that said your guys play like they love each other so more than like it's cliche but team 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 they're tough they play hard they play for each other um they love each other um they're together through good and bad um but that one message i got was like that is if i picked one man there's not much better you could say than that or here and so you got to continue to make sure that Hawaii basketball, when you play us, no team's going to play hard. They're going to play tough. They're going to stick together. And man, do they support each other. And you could see that with our teams on the floor. Um, it's consistent with the X's and O's. Let's say offensively, we play together. Defensively, we play together. The special team facts, the press, the rebounding, they're together. Their bench supports each other. When the players come out, they support each other. Again, going back to a, I can get more messages and say, well, your team plays like they love each other. We're in pretty good shape. And Coach Aron, what I love about your team, you know, I always say that we're all in one of three situations in competition. We're either winning, losing, or tied. But your attitude and effort should always be the same. There's so many competitors where they, when they're losing, they perform differently versus when they're winning. And your teams, I mean, it doesn't matter if they're winning, losing, or tied, they're just, they're playing tough. I mean, how, how hard is it for you to get them to practice how they play in games and to play in games how they practice? Well, we make everything a competition. And, and you know, as you know, uh, when you go through the motions, um, you'll, you're, built, you're creating some bad habits. It takes a long time to build good habits. It doesn't take long to break them. And so the consistency, like we talked about earlier in practice and the weight room, big on achievers, on the court, off the court, in the classroom, no one way. You know, some people say, well, I'm here on the court, I'm like this in the classroom, like there's one way. And so more than anything, we thank the parents of our, our players because we gravitate towards guys with great character who understand that. And we have to catch them in moments when they slip. We're, it's human nature is to be average. Human nature is at times to let down. Human nature is at times to hang your head to celebrate too much. We want to enjoy success. We want to, it's got to hurt a little bit when you don't have success. You just can't have it out of control um, because it is, and basketball, obviously, what a great team sport, all sports. But if you hang your head, you're giving up a layup. You know, and if you celebrate 
you know, same thing, you're going to get burned by it. So, you know, you're always constantly fighting human nature. And, and so the messaging from our staff and then the leaders in our program, and then they become each of the younger guys, the younger guys become the older guys, they show the way. Uh, but you see it at every level. Everybody's got to fight that. And so the more we can catch it, the more we, our, your teammates can catch that. Um, it's human nature, but how quickly can you get back on the right path? So there's consistency in the messaging with our team, and we try to promote um, competition in everything we do uh, to enforce that. Yeah, and, and just having that awareness is, is so important. But like you said, it's all it's it's human nature. And and Coach Iran, what what are your top priorities as head coach? It's a great question. I think there, we wear a lot of hats, uh, all head coaches, as you know, and especially here in Hawaii. Um, and the hats keep growing with all the new rules and, and things going on nationally. But uh, at, the, at the forefront, it's number one is always make sure we got the right people. Um, you could have the right X's and O's and all this and all that, but if the right people aren't bored, nothing really else matters. So I think I talked to you before when I hire, we hire, it's character, talent, investment, uh, great people, great coaches, great mentors. Uh, and people want to be here. And the same with our players, great people, um, great players, and they all want to be here. So I think uh, it's important to continue that message and, and make sure, number one, that when we are our first, our meeting every morning is about are our guys in a good place, everything good, and we go through each guy. And so, as you know, they're going through challenges and more challenges than generations before us with all the social media and the challenges they're facing in this COVID world. So, <clears throat> number one, I think it's making sure the right people are on the bus and the right people are, are staying on the right path. And then we talk about the X's and O's stuff, the, the program building that we're all dreamers in our program that. Um, we're supposed to make it better than we found it. We're supposed to think outside the box. I want a team and a staff and players that are innovators and dreamers, and I want to encourage that as well. So uh, making sure that our program is being run right in every area, and that's something that you spend a lot of time daily because, as we all know, it could slip in a second. I totally agree with you. And, Coach Ron, what, what do you do to get your team – to buy in to your coaching philosophy? You know, it's, I know there's a lot of consistency with my answers because it's about bringing the right people. But to be honest, one of the things that takes it up a notch in terms of what you just said is they, if you want them to buy in, they got to be invested. So they have a voice and they've earned the voice. And it's great to hear these guys different. So we have incredible human beings on our program, staff, players. And I tell anybody, uh, as COVID is hopefully improving and you can be around them more, go introduce yourself. They will introduce themselves. They're impressive. It's our number one commodity. But on top of that, they're, it's more than just what they do on the floor. These are intelligent uh, young men, future leaders, uh, great husbands and fathers in the future and all that. And so um, it's great to hear, like we, one of the things we do that creates that buy-in is we start every year with, letting them know about the history of the program, the history of Hawaii, the history of the state, the history of the university, the athletic department, that creates a buy-in. Now they know to build for the future. I know this is something I've said since year one, you have to honor your past, honor your past, you gotta know your past. So that's number one. And then two, you gotta, once they've earned the right and they do pretty quickly because who they are, you listen to them. I mean, we've learned as much from our players as we do from our coaches sometimes. They're on the floor, uh, we're not on the floor. So. And the more they feel like they have investment, the more they invest and the more they're engaged. And I think that creates uh, the best your team can be. And that's all, you know, there might be some ups and downs when you empower young men early, but the long-term benefits are significant. Now, you and I know the importance of team bonding. And what do you do to enhance team bonding with your team off the court? I know you're not briefly talked about this before, but there's so much we do. And, and first of all, we eat together and nothing brings people together like food. So as often as we can eat together and as often we can eat family style together, uh, we do. And, um, and that's one. Then there's the one we talked about in immersing yourself in the culture and understanding who you represent. We do a lot of community service. <clears throat> uh, giving back is really important. So great team bonding. We, we've been to the children's hospital We've been involved with Special Olympics, uh, the homeless shelter here, um, Coaches vs. Cancer, 
uh, in the reading program, which has been great. So, you know, eating together, community service, and then we'll do stuff like on the road, we'll go to whether it's a game together or some kind of fun event together involved with the military, obviously here and the bases. And we'll again, get them involved and they have some ideas for team events. We hear their stories. Everybody, every year is a new team and it's always good to hear each story. I, there's nothing I love more. When you say, why do you coach? Because you can see a guy improve and grow. <clears throat> but we've had guys from all over the mainland, all over the country, internationally, learning about different cultures. It's awesome. And so every year we kind of start with each of these guys' stories, their backgrounds, their family situations. And uh, there's nothing like that. So yes, the community service, the food, uh, team fun events, going to the beach, sporting events, non-sporting events. I'm sure there'll be some new ideas that our guys present this year, which is going to be great. Oh, I, I love hearing all of that. And, and you're right. I mean, just, just to do things, you know, off the basketball court is so valuable to enhance the bonding. And yeah, definitely eating makes everybody happy. And Coach Aron, I want to I talk with you a little bit about my books because you're a coach. You're somebody that definitely goes beyond the lines. And my number one priority as head coach was to develop champion athletes of character first and then great tennis players second. And I know earlier you mentioned about character. Tell me more about the importance of character to you. Well, it's like when we go around and we recruit a guy, sometimes you recruit a guy and the first thing you see is their talent. And then that, but we all, we have a kind of as a staff, we, well, how good a worker, how good a teammate, does he love the game? <clears throat> does he love to compete? Does he love being part of a team? Is he low maintenance off the court? Does he want to improve? Uh, how is he in the classroom? How is he in the community? Um, so all those things need to be checked off to be part of our program. And so and the character piece you know, obviously allows you to, because we all know you're going to go through some ups and downs. Uh, we've certainly had them from our first year to then, you know, rehabilitating our program, stabilizing our program, and then here comes COVID. And then, as we all know, we all deal with injuries and things like that, but we've never fallen off a cliff. It's not really where we want to be because the next breakthrough is something important for us and is coming. But when teams go through some of the stuff that we've been through, they can fall off a cliff. And so why, when people ask, why have you guys not? It's because we have great character and our guys stick together and they look out for each other and they care for each other. And those guys, to be honest, are the ones who improve. So there's a lot of guys who are maybe further ahead from other kids at a certain age, but we kind of gravitate also towards people who we say the arrow is going up, you know? Now, maybe he's got to get stronger or he's got to develop a skill set, but this is one of those guys you don't want to bet against or you don't want to compete against. His arrow goes up and other guys might be higher at a certain stage, but their arrow is the same or they'll be passed up. And once those high character guys pass up another kid, it's over because they don't know any other way. They're just, hey, they have success and they're hungry for more success. Failure comes, they look at it as a great opportunity to get better. And so that's, as you know, easy to say, hard to do, but you got to find those special young men. And then you got to, as a staff, it's incumbent upon us to support them in a way they can make their next step. And Coach Aron, the mental part of the game is huge, not just in the game, but just having the right mindset in life in general. How, how do you get your team to have a championship mindset in basketball and in life? Well, we're fortunate. Um, you know, we have a guy on our staff, Mike Thomas, who's the winningest player in school history and has been on our 15, 16 NCAA tournament. I've been part of five NCAA tournaments. John Montgomery has been part of, I think, more than that. And so, yes, on staff, we, we need to make sure we have guys who've been through it, uh, what it takes. And then as you know, and we talked about earlier, just the opportunity to learn from different coaches, different sports, business leaders. I told you we're involved with the bases. And so we have kind of, yes, well, here's what we know, but it's always good to bring new voices. So we'll, we'll I was telling you earlier, we'll watch Nadal <laughs> play tennis. 
you know, watch, you know, make sure our guys are watching the NBA finals or any uh, sport or business at their peak and either watch how they do it or listen to them, learn from them. So your books, I'm, a, I'm an avid reader. We, sometimes there's a lot of articles we share with their team. Here's a book we share with our team. Here's a guy we found out was in town. We want him to speak to our team. You know, I've coached a guy who's won an NBA championship, a speak to our team. Or there's other guys in any sport that's been at the top of their game. So the simplest way I can say is, here's what we believe we need to do. And we've been there to do what we want to do to win at a championship. And we kind of continue to have that um, embedded in everything we do. And then whenever you can bring a different voice in any field, because you can, as we both know, like, yes, I'm the head coach, you've been a coach. Um, but there, the similarities between just being the best at what you do, it, the, the, the vehicle you use, whether it's basketball, tennis, business, I learn a lot from people who have nothing to do with basketball. And so um, the leadership books and, and different sports, different business avenues, I think that's what we try to complement what we do internally with our program. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we can, we can learn a, a lot about mindset from anybody and from whatever sports or business. And, and Coach Run, you mentioned earlier about some of the past UH basketball coaches that, that you admire. Who is one coach that you really admire and why? Such a good question. I mean, I know you, we were going to talk about it. Um, first of all, the coaches who coached me, and I'm going to end with one as a, as a one-off, but I, I remember every coach I've had. And so the influence they had on me, and I'm so blessed and fortunate to be around great people, uh, from my youth coaches to my freshman coach, JV coach, varsity coach. I went to play under, you know, my Kurt Holman at Tenafly High School, Lee Wimberly at Swarthmore College. Then I started my coaching career. All those guys are huge. Randy Bennett at St. Mary's the great coaches in the country. Then I went to work for Riley Walls. Both those two coaches obviously are the winningest coaches at their respective schools. Bob Nash, I mean, it's, it's not often, and that's why I tell people how blessed I was to not only play for and work for great coaches, but great people and mentors. And so those guys are all incredible for me. If there was one coach outside the direct that I follow that I didn't play for a coach, it's probably Greg Popovich. Um, for very, a lot of similar reasons that I, and I've been fortunate to have been to his training camps and he was really close with Randy Bennett. He was really, really close with my college coach. Um, so he gave us some access that you maybe not couldn't have before. And just to watch, it's so funny. These guys are pro guys and, and just like our camp. And we're telling our guys, we start with the fundamentals and the basics and the culture. And it's not different at the elite level, but if there was one coach, to answer your question, outside of the guys I played and worked for, it would be Greg Povich for not just obviously he's the winningest coach, he's won championships, but the way he does it on an all encompassing level, um, how he cares about his guys as players, as people off the court in all areas, how he very balanced with what's going on in the world. Um, certainly someone I look up to. Yeah, Coach Pops, I mean, he's definitely coaching them for life. Um, and to really be, be successful in life. And I like that you said that. And Coach Aron, what's, what's an important lesson you learned in life so far? All about people. I know you've probably heard me say it all over this show, but it's all about people. If, and I say it to our recruits and our guys, if you do what you love, first of all, you're never going to be good at anything if you're not happy. And in order to be happy, you got to do what you love, where you love, with people you love, which I'm doing now. The last caveat is you got to, do that where you're improving because nobody's happy if they're not getting better. Right. Um, so to be able to coach the game with the people I get to work with on staff, players I get to coach, the administration I get to work with the people in the community in Hawaii, um, in Hawaii, obviously. So I'm doing what I love, where I love what people I love and I'm growing and getting better. I'm challenged by people here and my, our staff. So the best thing I can say is because if I, you, Anyone around me says, hey, he loves the game. He loves to compete. But if I was just like for anybody, if you were doing what you love, but not with the right people, you, pro you might not love it. So the best thing I can say is, and I've, every decision I've made, and I encourage people to do that, 
is make the decision number one about people and do what you love where you love where you uh with people you love um and that you're getting better oh and and coach Ron, you've been building a lot of great relationships because really that's that's what it's about what you just said there and because it's all about people like you said and that's about relationship building and I want to ask you, Coach Ron, what are some of the bigger challenges that you deal with as coach? Well, I mean, our challenges are always, as a coach, is let's say on an overview, making sure our program continues to run in the, in the highest integrity on the court, off the court, and in the classroom, and keep it that way with all the challenges going on. Now, in terms of coaching our individual kids, to continue to what, what our job is to foster team, the foster team and with the challenges going on. So what we talked earlier about, you know, how tough it is for the youth. And even as they get to us at 18 and 22 year old, you know, defining success has changed for some of these guys. They have the challenges, yes, from COVID um, and not having some of the things that we were fortunate blessed to have during that time. Cause I've always said the, COVID has been very difficult for everybody, every profession, but man, can you imagine if it affected our childhood? And then two, with social media and the pressure that these kids face, we didn't have to deal with that to that extent, and certainly a generation before me. It's now, you know, we grew up where, you know, kids want to do well, they want to please, they want um, people to be proud of them, and that's a great thing. Um, but the, it used to be you want to make your parents proud of the people in your, you know, that you care about, you know. And now people have defined success a little bit too much in terms of pe what people they don't even know think about them. And so with all these distractions that kids have now and the challenges, if anything, and it's a great challenge, hey, we live for challenges as coaches, right? So how can I continue or how can we as a staff continue to encourage team and continue to define success for team for our guys with all the challenges that enforce at times the opposite. Coach Aran, I wanna ask you one more thing before we wrap up. You just started again, you restarted your Hawaii men's basketball kids camp. And tell me about that right now. Well, I mean, we always wanna, like I said earlier, like a leg, you know, make things better than when we found it. So we used, Hawaii used to have two four day camps. That's not enough. We introduced an August camp really successful and then this last weekend we had a team camp never had before um but in 2019 was the last time we were able to have camps and so and those were record-breaking numbers and then we haven't had camps in three years so there's nothing better just like we say with our guys but same with kids we got great kids in the community who come to camps every year we get to see them during the course of the year but when we see them for camp you see the jump they've made they've grown they've gotten better um, and then all the kids we talked, we talked the same talk you and I are having, we had with our campers. So it's about relationships. When you come in the gym, do you go grab a bar? Or do you go introduce yourself to someone? Because a lot of you guys know each other, but there's about a lot of other kids you've never met that you will now become friends with for life. And now that the camps can come back. So um, there's nothing better than the community. There's nothing better than the kids in the community. And just to see these guys running around the Stan Sheriff Center in our practice gyms with our players and with our coaches, see the smiles on their faces, to provide an atmosphere for them, uh, uh, an environment for them to, to work on their skills and fundamentals, things they can take home with them. It was tough to not have a lot of things over the last three years, and certainly camps were one of them. So just to see them run back on the court was a, a moment. And, and now we're going to build back to breaking numbers again and, and adding new camps. I think we'll try to add a parent-child camp in the future. Here comes our team camp. And I think it's awesome. And, and I know our kids, well, number one, we bring in great character because, you know, some of the most recognizable people in the state of Hawaii are the student athletes at UH. And certainly we, basketball guys are tall. They don't have a helmet. So people recognize them. So heck yeah, they better be pretty influential for these young kids. And I have said this over the years, but you work your tail off in life to be in a position of influence so you can give back. And so if these guys or our staff are in that position, we better do our part. And I feel strongly that we do. We'll continue to do better in that regard. But seeing things come back and seeing these campers is another 
avenue for us and it's exciting. I'm so happy that that things that the kids camp is back for you and Coach Aran, I, I want everybody to support you and your team. You're a man of great character, a great coach, and I really want to thank you for joining me on the show today. Well, I appreciate it, and we'll, we'll continue to do our part, and we'll continue to improve and do better. It's such an honor. I'm finally invited to the show, so I'm excited to be on here, and I appreciate the time. Thanks, Coach Aran, and thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com, and my books are available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. I hope that Coach Iran and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.